Kaisen's anime begins by showing an old man named Kazuo Yamashita, who is meeting with his boss, Hide Kinogi. Kinogi purposely calls Kazuo to his office to tell him about a martial arts match called Kengon. Kinogi explains that Kengon is a fair martial arts battle that has been held since the ancient imperial era of Japan to resolve a conflict. In ancient times, traders who competed with other traders usually held Kengon matches to fight over territory or control the sale of certain commodities. In a Kengon fight, each merchant or company will hire a fighter to represent their company in a fair one-on-one -on -one duel without using weapons. Kinogi tells Kazuo that he will join Kengon's fight for power rights with another company. He introduced a young man named Oma Tokita, who would later become a fighter representing his company in the Kengon fight. Kinogi orders Kazuo to care for all of Oma's needs until the Kengon match starts. After getting back from work, at night, Kazuo is used to preparing dinner for his only son, who always locks himself in his room. He has been living that lonely life since his wife left him 10 years ago without a clear reason. The next day, Kazuo tries to come to Oma's house in the middle of the forest in an old abandoned building. While at his house, two boxers from Russia named Lihito came with his friend Ivan to tell Oma that Lihito would later become his opponent in the Kangon fight for a building project worth 100 billion yen. The next day, the Kangon fight between Oma and Lihito began in an old building that had been abandoned in heavy rain conditions. Many elite corporate leaders came to watch the match because the value of the project at stake by the two companies was enormous. When the fight started, Oma threw consecutive punches to Lihito's face and body until he was overwhelmed. However, as it turned out, he was deliberately hit by Oma so that he could attack Oma using the knife finger incision, which became his mainstay attack. After analyzing Lihito's attack and finding the weakness of his attack, Oma approached him and grabbed his hand so that he couldn't make a slash attack at all. In the evening, Kinogi celebrates Oma's victory by inviting him to dinner together with a variety of delicious meat dishes. His female secretary, Kaede, then asked Oma why he participated in the Kangon match, which was known to be very dangerous and had a very high risk. Oma casually replied that he participated in the Kangon fight to become the most powerful fighter respected by other fighters. But actually, the reason he participated in the Kangon match was to be able to meet someone who had killed his teacher named Nico. The next day, Oma returns to a Kangon match with a stronger opponent named Jun Seikibayoshi, a fighter from Argentina. At first, Oma had a hard time attacking Jun because his physical resistance was very strong, and he could also counter all of Oma's attacks with a slam so hard that Oma fell unconscious. The audience looked enthusiastic and kept cheering for Jun to end this match by defeating Oma. But not long after, he woke up from his stupor and gave off a strong aura that confused Jun. With drastically increased agility and attack speed, he finally managed to defeat Jun and won the match. After the match ended, an old man named Mitsudo Katahara came to the center of the arena with his bodyguard. Mitsudo is the leader of the Kangon Fighting Association and also holds the Dai no Bank's governor position. Mitsudo had deliberately come to the fight to announce that the deadly Kangon tournament would be starting soon to determine who would be the new leader of the Kangon Fighting Association. Anyone who wants to be a candidate for the new leader must send their best fighter to fight against his representative fighter named Feng, the strongest fighter in the history of Kangon. The next day, Oma looks annoyed at Kinogi for choosing another fighter to represent his company in the Kangon tournament, a tough guy named Sen Hatsumi. Kinogi deliberately chose Sen to represent his company because, so far, Sen has never lost in all the matches he participated in. To solve Oma's problem, Kinogi suggests that Kazuo register as Oma's employer so that he can participate in the Kangon tournament. Kazuo will pay 100 million yen to the official referee of the Kangon Association so that Oma can participate in the verification match. Later if Oma can win the verification match, he will automatically be able to register in the deadly Kangon tournament. Hearing this, Oma immediately accepted the offer, even though Kazuo had not given any answer to Kinogi. The next day, Oma fights in an unofficial Kangon match to verify as a new member of the Kangon Association. His opponent in this match is Masayasu Yokota, a representative fighter from the food company Usblacky. While Oma is registered as a representative fighter of the fictional company Yamashita, a subsidiary of the Kinogi Group Company. After a very short fight, he can easily defeat Yokota with one very hard hit. That night, when Oma was practicing fighting alone, he recalled his past when his teacher named Niko was killed by his fellow teacher named Satsuna Kiryu. Since Oma discovered that the person who had killed his teacher was Kuryo, he is determined to defeat all the strongest fighters in the Kangon match, including Kiryu. The following night, Oma, Kazuo, and Kaede came to the harbor dock with hundreds of the company's elite leaders and their fighters. Kazuo, who was taking part in the deadly Kangon tournament for the first time, looked awkward because he wasn't used to all of this. Not long after, Mitsudo's personal bodyguard announced to the elite company leaders and elite fighters who received an official invitation to immediately board the yacht. 
Meanwhile, company leaders and other fighters who did not receive an invitation were asked to board the Ship of Death, where the first round of the Kangon tournament battles would be held. Inside the Ship of Death, the fighters would do their best on the lower deck while the company leaders would watch on the top floor. Before the match started, Oma asked Kaede to bring some water, but when Kaede was about to leave the battle arena, the door suddenly closed. Kaede was stuck in the battle arena because she had spent too long chatting with Oma, so she had no other choice but to wait on the edge of the arena until the match was over. The fighting committee then announced that the first round of the Kangon tournament would soon begin. In this round, the first, second, and third representative fighters from various companies would compete for the five slots still available for the next round. When the match starts, Oma must fight against several fighters while protecting Kaede from other fighters. Fortunately, Lihito, who also participated in the Kangon tournament, came to help Oma and formed an alliance with him so they could pass to the next round more easily. After hours of fierce fighting, the five fighters who finally qualified for the next round were Lihito, Oma, Keizabu Sawada, Yoshinari Karo, and Hazard. After the first round of battle ended, they boarded the yacht and were greeted by Mitsudo and his personal bodyguard. However, Hazard is eliminated outright for rebelling and attacking Mitsudo's personal bodyguard. After that, Mitsudo announced to all invited guests that the second round of the Kangon tournament would be held in the next 27 hours so that the fighters were allowed to rest before the fight took place. He also announced to the company leaders to re-register the recording representative fighters before the tournament started. Moments after the announcement, several fighters experienced attacks from other fighters because they wanted to seize the position of fighters who had escaped through the invitation route. In that random attack, the fighter named Ryohimura was attacked by the fighter named Suikichi. Inoue Machizo was attacked by the crazy fighter named Maguro Masaki, and Takemoto was attacked by Nikaido Ren. All the attackers managed to seize the positions of the three fighters. However, something different happened to Imae Cosmo and Wakatsuki Takeshi. Although they were both attacked by rebel fighters named Akufu Kyusio and Kufra, they managed to defend themselves and defeat the two rebels. And it turns out that all of the rebel fighters' attacks were masterminded by a power company leader named Katsumasa Hayami, who intended to bring down Mitsudo Katahara. Meanwhile, Lihito's female manager, Kanade, was seen scolding Lihito and Oma because they were hanging around the casino when there were a lot of random attacks. Not long after, the thing that she was afraid of happened where there was a small fighter who suddenly attacked Oma. Still, when Oma realized the fighter was a woman, he immediately stopped his attack and asked why she had attacked him. Her name, Karakure, loudly said that she liked Oma and wanted to make him her husband so that they could have children together. Hearing the sudden proposal, Oma ran away because he did not know how to respond to the proposal. Not long after he left, Kara's two older brothers, Reichi Kure and Holly's Kure, came to pick her up. The Kure family is the most famous assassin family and is feared by many other clans because of their power and dark aura. After that, Kara approached her grandfather, Ario Kure, saying that she had fallen in love with an old man named Oma Tokita and wanted to marry him. Hearing this, he immediately asked her to go enjoy the party before he finally vented his anger by smashing the floor because Oma had dared to approach his beloved granddaughter. Ario then orders Kaara's other brothers to keep an eye on Oma and, if necessary, remove him from the fight. The next day after the cruise ship arrived at a private island owned by Mitsudo, company leaders and fighters were invited to stay at a luxury hotel that he had prepared before. In the evening, when the second round of the Kangon tournament was about to start, Kazuo looked nervous about attending the lottery to determine the opponents of the contestants. At the meeting, he met with two other company leaders, Oya Ken and Katsumasa. When Kazuo was still awkward with the situation, a Yoshitake real estate company leader named Yoshiro approached Kazuo and Lihito to insult Lihito. He almost got beat up by Lihito, but because the lottery had started, Yoshiro managed to escape. The event opened with remarks from Mitsudo and Kinogi as promoters who accommodated this event. Kazuo looked surprised because Kinogi looked serious during the event. Still, after he found out that Kinogi was risking his company in this tournament, he became nervous because if the Kinogi group went bankrupt, he would automatically go bankrupt. Mitsudo then announced that in this tournament, all participants would be divided into four different standings from standings A to standings D. He warned company leaders to avoid his strongest fighter named Kano Agito, who is in standings D. The draw process will be carried out using a number machine where the person who gets the highest number gets a turn to choose the faster block. Sadly, Kazuo had bad luck during the drawing process because Oma would be paired with Kano Agito in the fourth match. After that, other company leaders began to choose their respective slots based on the number of numbers they got. After the draw to determine the opponent of each fighter was finished, Kazuo hoped that Oma wouldn't mind the standings he got. That night, the deadly Kangon match tournament was finally held at a large stadium on the island. 
In addition to elite executives from well-known companies, many officials, media journalists, and world leaders also enlivened the event to witness the Kangon performance. The first match was a one-on-one -on -one duel between Imai Cosmo, who was known as a delinquent fighter who had defeated Yakuza fighters, and a large fighter named Adam Dudley. Before the match, Cosmo's company boss named Nishishanji asked him not to push himself too much in the match later, but Cosmo looked calm and confidently said he would win the match. After both fighters were ready, Mitsudo's daughter, Sayaka Katahara, stated that the match would soon begin. Ronald Haraguchi, the boss of Adam Dudley's company, seemed to underestimate Cosmo because of Cosmo's small body, so he asked Adam to finish the match quickly. The battle between them was fierce, with Cosmo starting his initial attack with various punches and kicks. Cosmo seems superior to Adam because he is used to fighting against bigger enemies and has a mainstay attack in the form of scissor claws. However, all of Cosmo's punches still haven't been able to paralyze Adam, who has much greater physical strength than him. When Adam counterattacked with a light punch, Cosmo suddenly dodged the attack, so the audience looked surprised at his reaction. However, one of the fighters named Ren said that Cosmo's response was correct because Adam's punch was able to make Cosmo seriously injured. After Adam got back up, Cosmo again prepared to fight against him with a stronger attack. But unfortunately, Adam managed to counter all the attacks and threw him very hard. But in the end, Cosmo managed to win the match by locking Adam's neck so that he didn't realize that Cosmo had attacked him first. One of the fighters seems amazed by Cosmo's technique known as the zoning technique, which is very difficult for other fighters to master. As a result of Cosmo's victory, Ronald, the boss of Adam's company, was forced to withdraw from the match and give the losing money to Nishishanji. While everyone was cheering for Cosmo's victory, Nishishanji even looked angry because he just realized that this match could hurt Cosmo that badly. The next participant in the Kangon match is a fighter named Kono Haruo, who comes from the strongest tribe in the Himalayas. Haruo was adopted by a video game company leader named Akio Kono, who is specially trained to participate in the Kangon tournament. However, when Haruo moved from the Himalayas to Japan, he became addicted to video games and became a big fat man. Meanwhile, the fighter who will be his opponent in this match represents Wakasa Insurance Company, Akoya Shesi. When the match started, Haruo immediately issued the first attack, but Akoya managed to dodge all of them thanks to a signal from a battle analyst girl named Hiyama. Soon after, Haruo unleashed multiple attacks in succession, causing Akoya to slam hard against the walls of the battle arena. While Akoya continued to carry out defensive strategies, Haruo continued to attack him with various punches and bear-killing techniques. Fortunately, Akoya managed to repel the attack again and issued a counterattack that was able to break Haruo's skull. During the fight, Akoya briefly recalled the memories of the past when he was still a police officer, where he often judged big-name criminals by breaking them. After he meets Hiyama, he finally decides to become a Kangon fighter to vent his frustration. After a very fierce battle between Akoya and Haruo, he finally made Haruo fall with a very hard kick. Just as the referee announced Akoya as the match winner, Haruo suddenly got up and gave off a very dark, killing aura. This made Hiyama panic and asked Akoya to defend himself properly again so she could devise a new attack strategy. Unfortunately, Akoya, unable to withstand Haruo's attack, he ended this match with a high kick so hard that Haruo fell unconscious for the second time. Akoya was declared the winner of the match, and Haruo had to re-examine his defeat in the match. After the fight, Hiyama immediately approached Akoya and apologized for failing to analyze the fight faster. An angry Akoya immediately slapped her, but after seeing her pitiful face, he forgave her while wiping the wound on her face. After a fierce battle between Akoya and Hiyama, this anime continues with a member of the Kure assassin family named Fuzui Kure, stalking a house to carry out long-range assassinations. While Fuzui Kure was scouting, her older brother, Enzo Kure, came to her to give her some food. It turns out that the person Fuzui targets is Kazuo's son, Kenzo Yamashita, who has always locked himself in his room. Back in the battle arena at the Octagon Stadium, the participants who will be the fighters in this duel are Ryan Kure and Mokichi Robinson. When the match was about to start, Ryan Kure entered the arena covered in blood because he had just beaten Lihito in the bathroom. Meanwhile, Mokichi seemed to be saying goodbye to his little sister Alina Robinson before entering the arena. When the fight begins, Ryan looks more aggressive by making various consecutive attacks at Mokichi with great ferocity. But Mokichi calmly overcomes these attacks by using classic jujitsu martial arts moves to impress Ario Kure. After successfully executing a strong defensive strategy, Mokichi immediately counterattacked with greater strength so that Ryan was brought down. But even so, Ryan bounced back with a killing aura so terrifying that it made Lihito look nervous because he had been defeated by the technique. Ryan then beats Mokichi using a secret technique from the Kure assassin family called the Release Technique. 
As a result of mastering a very capable technique and increasing attack power, he finally managed to defeat Mokichi by breaking his neck. Kazuo, who saw the incident in the audience, became very scared because one day Oma would have to face someone as brutal as Ryan. In the waiting room, Kazuo and Kaede asked Oma to get ready because he was going to fight in the next match. On the other hand, a male fighter named Inaba is also preparing to fight Oma and is determined to win this match according to his boss's request. When the battle started, Kazuo seemed happy because Oma seemed to have the upper hand in the duel. Even Inaba's lightning attack technique was successfully broken by Oma's interval attack technique, so he managed to give Inaba a hard blow. After a fairly fierce battle, Oma intended to end the fight by issuing the strongest kick attack to Inaba, but Inaba's action was prevented by using his very strong hair. In times of crisis, Oma recalled the spirit given by his late teacher, Niko Tokita, so that he regained his strength to fight against Inaba. After successfully untying Inaba's hair from his body, he beat Inaba with very strong blows in a row until Inaba was overwhelmed. After successfully dropping Inaba, Oma was declared the winner in the match and qualified for the next round. After the match, Inaba's boss, Urita, visited his room to be treated and recalled the memories of when they first met, where Urita helped him when his father died in the Kengan fight several years ago. Urita has also considered Inaba his friend and his family, so their relationship became closer. In another operating room, Mokichi has been saved thanks to an operation carried out by a fighter from Taito University named Hanafusa Hajima. When Hajima saw the fight between Oma and Inaba, he seemed to recognize Oma as if they had met before. In the fifth match, the one-on-one -on -one duel took place more quickly, and a fighter named Takeshi Wakatsuki was declared the winner after defeating a fighter named Murabuchi. In the first match in the other standings, Julius Reinhold was declared the winner because the head of the music company had decided to withdraw from the fight. The representative fighter from the music company also seemed surprised to hear that and immediately went to meet his leader, Togawa Yoshiko. After investigation, it turned out that Togawa was forced to resign from the fight because she had been threatened by a group of fighters belonging to Katsumasa's company. This person had previously planned the attack above. Not long after, Sawada, who did not accept the cheating, immediately attacked Julius by using a high kick to the neck. Unfortunately, all of these attacks left Sawada seriously injured because Julius was able to break his right leg. When Julius almost finished off Togawa, Oma and Kazuo coincidentally came to the place so that Togawa was rescued and Katsumasa's henchmen left the place. In the next battle, one of the fighters from Katsumasa's subsidiary, Masaki, will fight against a clever fighter named Mudeba Gizenga. At first, Gizenga seemed overwhelmed to attack Masaki because he had already crushed Gizenga and had considerable physical strength. However, after Gizenga fought back by attacking Masaki's eyes, ears, and testicles, he finally had an opening to escape from his body. After a fairly brutal fight between them, Gizenga finally wins the match after he kills Masaki by destroying his brain. Katsumasa, who saw the incident looked relaxed because all this time, he only thought of Masaki as his pet, while in the audience, Kazuo looked shocked because it was the first time he had seen someone killed in a fight. Shortly afterward, Oma said that Masaki died because he was too weak and that it was normal in a death Kengon fight. That night, Hajime came to see the results of Oma's medical examination and concluded that his time was short. In the next battle round, a male fighter named Takeru Kyozan will fight against one of the strongest fighters, Jun Seikibayoshi, who once fought against Oma. When the match started, Jun deliberately provoked Takeru's anger by inviting him over and over until finally Takeru, who couldn't take it anymore, beat Jun. At the beginning of the match, Jun continued to let Takeru beat him without resistance until he started running out of energy. Even after Takeru released his attack technique called Kakuyoku, Jun still insulted him by saying he was not a real fighter. Hearing Jun's outrageous insults, Takeru also chose to use his ultimate attack, relying on the power of a very fast foot jump to ram his body. But after the lightning strike, Jun could get back up, and Takeru instead lay helpless in front of him. Turns out that Jun has a very strong abdominal muscle strength that made Takeru's head hurt very badly when he attacked Jun's stomach using his head. After seeing the helpless Takeru, Jun immediately ended the match by slamming Takeru's body to the ground very hard. In the evening, all the fighters and leaders rest and enjoy a delicious dinner of various dishes. A male fighter named Rei can also spend his time having fun with his female boss, Reno. But this is different from Oma, who chooses to practice in his sleep by imagining all the enemies he has faced before. After fighting with other fighters, Oma suddenly met his teacher who had died, Nico, who challenged him to fight. He immediately attacked Nico with various techniques that had been taught by Nico. Still, besides the technique, Oma also often used a technique called progress to be able to defeat his opponent. Unfortunately, the advancement technique risks making Oma seriously injured if he uses the technique for a long time. 
Nico advised him to prioritize using the fighting techniques he had taught, but Oma still doubted Nico's technique because he lost the battle against Kiryu. When Oma suddenly woke up from his sleep, Kazuo and Kaede were coincidentally already in Oma's room, worrying that his condition was getting worse. Shortly after he woke up, he suddenly had a nosebleed and coughed up so much blood that he began to realize that the illness was caused by the effects of using the advancement technique. The next day, the Kangon fighting tournament resumed with a one-on-one -on -one duel match between a fighter named Yashinari Kari from the Kajiro Fish Farm Company and Saw Peng Yoraizuka, a representative from Fajar Village. The fight begins with Saw continuously attacking Kari using a self-defense technique from Myanmar called Lethway Fist. Lethway's fist was a continuous punch attack that prioritized attack speed and agility over the defense. After understanding the situation, Kari immediately took advantage of Saw's low defense gap by attacking him at his vital points. However, the attack was still unable to make Saw fall completely because he had trained his skull a lot since he was a child, so he had very strong skull bones. The fight continued again until Saw finally managed to lock Kari and break his neck with one very strong blow. As a result, the battle was won by Saw, and the fish company owned by Kari's boss had to hand over their dock to Saw's boss named Katsumasa, the leader of a private electricity company. The next match is a one-on-one -on -one duel between Rei Mikazuchi, a representative from Reno's company, and a large male fighter named Masami Nazu, a representative of the Destiny Land Company. Rei is a genius fighter known to have a mysterious assassination technique called the Ration Technique, which can only be mastered by people who have completely fused with darkness. The fight ended quickly because he defeated Masami with one lightning attack in the form of a deadly blow. In the next battle, Oma was surprised by the arrival of his mortal enemy, Setsuna Kiryu, in the middle of the battle arena. Kiryu will fight against a talented fighter named Ren Nikato in this one-on-one -on -one duel match. When the match started, the battle between them was very fierce because both had very capable fighting skills, Ren with his technique called Chilong and Kiryu with his classic jujitsu called Koei technique. However, after their lightning strikes each other, Kiryu finally wins the match by a landslide after he manages to twist Ren's heart. When Kiryu left the arena, he signaled to Oma that he would wait for Oma in the upcoming match. The scene changes to Lihito lying limp in the medical room because he has been defeated by a powerful fighter named Gensai Kuroki, who has mastered ancient Okinawan Jujutsu. The one-on-one -on -one duel between Hatsumi from the Nogi group and Takayuki Chiba from the real estate company in the next round was also short. At first, Takayuki seemed confident by saying that he had mastered the fighting techniques of 22 Kangon fighters, but all that meant nothing when Hatsumi managed to defeat him in less than 30 seconds. After the match ended, Kinogi approached Takayuki's boss, Yoshiro, and taunted him by saying he was just a loser. Kinogi also reveals that he has learned Yoshiro's evil plan, which intends to kidnap him using the services of an assassin. However, he manages to thwart Yoshiro's devious plan by offering the Kangon Association membership position to the assassin's chief. As a result, Yoshiro had to accept that he would lose all his assets and membership in the Kangon Association. The scene switches to a male fighter named Yohei Bondo, who has just left the arena after he managed to defeat a young fighter named Hajime Hanafusa, the doctor who has been treating Oma all this time. Meanwhile, Hajime, who had fallen because his collarbone had been twisted by Bondo, finally managed to be saved by a man named Lord Dazai. After the position of the collarbone was corrected, Hajime regained consciousness from his stupor and explained that his collarbone wasn't broken but only shifted slightly. However, it was the opposite with Bondo, who suddenly fell limp after he left the arena. As it turned out, Bondo had been exposed to a deadly virus from Hajime's bone sword during the match, so he died in the end even though he had won the match. In the next match, a male fighter named Galan from Thailand will fight with Suikichi, who previously took the position of a fighter named Ryo Himoro. At first, Galan didn't attack Suikichi seriously and only hit him with one-handed punches in succession. However, after Suikichi challenged Galan to attack him with all seriousness, Galan immediately changed to slaughter mode to finish him off. Suikichi thought that he would have the momentum to attack Galan in the final attack, but it turns out that Galan managed to defeat him in the last attack. In the last match in the first round of the Kengon tournament, a fighter named Naoya will fight against Kano Agito, the legendary Kengon fighter who represents the Mitsudo Company. Many spectators were enthusiastic and anticipating the match because Kano is the legendary fighter of Kangon who has never lost in all the matches he has faced. After a very fierce match, Kano finally managed to defeat Naoya, causing him to fall and suffer severe trauma like all the fighters who had been defeated by Kano before. The next day, the first match in the second round of the Kangon tournament began with a duel between Imai Cosmo and Akoya Seishi. In this fight, Akoya seemed superior with physical strength and greater fighting ability than Cosmo. But in the end, Cosmo beat Akoya with his Python grip technique and secured a position to qualify for the third round. 
On the other hand, Oma saw Kazuo, who was worried about the game, so Oma approached him and calmed him down so he wouldn't be too nervous. In the middle of Oma and Kazuo's conversation, Aryo and Ryan Kure suddenly approached them to ask them to bet on the life of Kenzo, Kazuo's son. Seeing the confused Kazuo, Aryo explained that all this time, Kazuo was the original leader of the Undermoon organization. This assassin organization also worked with the Kure family. Aryo intends to put Kenzo's life at stake because he has acted as if he is controlling the Kure family clan. Oma, who feels sorry for Kazuo, decides to accept the challenge and fights Ryan Kure in the next match to save Kenzo's life. When the duel between Oma and Ryan was about to take place, Kazuo couldn't stop thinking about Kenzo's life. However, Oma tried to calm him and reassure Kazuo that he would not let Kenzo's life be in danger. Meanwhile, Kenzo begins to realize that his house has been surrounded by the Kure family, and he continues to be watched over by many members of the Kure family. Even the Kure family dared to plant small bombs around his house to terrorize him and assign several snipers to spy on him from a distance. Back to Oma and Ryan, who fought fiercely and were full of tension. He repeatedly attacks Ryan, but Ryan can stop and counter his attack with one hard blow. After repeatedly trying to take down Ryan, Oma realizes that he must transform into Ashura mode to defeat him. They immediately change to their respective Ashura modes and began to fight using a much more powerful force. In the middle of the fight, Kazuo received information from Hajime that Oma's Ashura mode was from heart control, and if he used that mode for too long, he would be in danger. Hearing that, Kazuo immediately rushed to call Kenzo to save himself so that Oma didn't have to continue the fight. However, the battle between Oma and Ryan can't be stopped anymore because Ryan is determined to kill him. When Oma fell unconscious in the battle arena, Kiryu shouted at him to get up immediately, and Kazuo also begged him to get back on his feet and win the match. After Oma got back up again, the fight between him and Ryan continued to be fierce until he finally managed to beat Ryan with one hard blow on Ryan's neck. Seeing Ryan lying helpless in the middle of the arena, the audience looked shocked. It was hard to believe that the Kure family, known as the legendary assassins, could be defeated by Oma Tokita. After the match ended, Kazuo went to Aryo to apologize for Kenzo's mistakes towards the Kure family. Hearing Kazuo's sincere request, Aryo immediately kept his promise to release Kenzo and cancelled the plan to kill him according to the agreement he had made earlier. After Kazuo left, Aryo received information about why Oma was able to join the Kangon tournament from Kinogi. Kinogi mentions that he purposely sent Oma to join the Kangon Association so that he could take over Mitsudo's position as chairman of the Kangon Association after Mitsudo's term ended later. After that, Kazuo approached Oma and thanked him for fighting to the death to save Kenzo. Thanks to Oma's hard work, Kazuo can feel relieved and grateful after hearing the news that Kenzo is fine. After Oma's victory overcame the best fighter from the Kure family, Oma, Kazuo, and Kaede decided to celebrate their victory by having dinner together. This is the end of the anime. This anime teaches us not to give up easily in every difficult situation in our lives, and to always remember everyone who supports us so that we can be more enthusiastic about achieving our goals.